Hello, everyone. How y'all doing today? Look, welcome, welcome, welcome to another day of what? Yes, this is Kawana Creates page. And yes, what do we do on this page? We E-I-C. We, what are those letters, Kawana? What does those letters mean? I'm about to tell you. E represents elevating. Elevating. That is my mission for life, to elevate people to the next level so that you, 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 my sisters and brothers, my kings and queens are inspired. And then I want you to be inspired to create your own world, okay? Because God has placed what? He's placed purpose in us, okay? He's given us all a mission here on this earth. I discovered my mission and I'm walking out my mission and my desire is to help you do the same, okay? So with that being said, I want y'all to just stay tuned, okay? Because we, we about to do some studying concerning faith today. Yes, faith. Why are we studying faith? Because faith is needed in every single area of our life. We cannot do anything without the Lord. I know that my life is meaningless without God, right? And I know that he wants me to what? He wants me to grab a hold to his faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so we got to have faith. Even when we don't even, excuse me, even when we don't see it, we have to believe it. Look, I want y'all to stay tuned, okay? Because I want y'all to check out this song before we get started with the message. And this song is by um, Maverick City Music. God had my daughter send this to me one day. And uh, I pushed, I turned, I pushed, I clicked the button. I was like, okay, Nick needs to send me a song. Let me check it out. Let me check it out. And I started listening to that song. I was like, ooh, do y'all know I played that song over and over and over again? And she texted me and she said, mommy, she said, mommy, she said, it's just, it, it was, it was something that she said at the end. She was just like, it's sick at not sick. She didn't say sick, but it's one of those young terms that people use. Basically, it was it was fire for her. She loved it. I mean, God, God must have plunged her heart because y'all, for her to send it to me, <laughs> you know it must have been good. So I played it over and over again because it truly blessed my soul. So stay on tune, check out the song, right? And let's get started. Get started. Do y'all hear it? And I don't know if I told y'all the name of the song. The name of the song is Promises by Maverick City Music. Turn my speaker off so you can really hear it. Jesus, my anchor to the ground. 
to the anchor to the ground, y'all. Firm foundation. Hallelujah.
I'll hear this part one more time again. This, this little part. Right still listen, listen. Yes, I'll still bless she you. She said, I will bless you, Lord. In the middle, in the of, middle the storm, of a storm. In the middle of my trial. In the middle of my trial. I'll still bless you. <laughs> in the middle of the road. Yes. When you, don't know where to go, when you don't know which way to go in the middle of the road, you're going to bless them. How many of y'all in a storm? How many of y'all in the middle of a trial? When you're in the middle of the road and you don't know literally which way to go, you don't know which road to take, you don't know which decision to make, you're going to still bless the Lord. God, you are so good. And you're so merciful, God. You're just such a good God. You're so, you're so kind. You're so forgiving, God. I thank you for always forgiving me of my sins, God. I thank you that I can come to you raw the way I am with all my issues and ailments and problems. Oh, God, I just thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus. There is no one like our daddy, y'all. There's no one like God. There's no one like God. There's no one can do you better like God. Man will fail you. Man will turn their back on you. They will disappoint you. Look, I'm man, so I'm capable of that. But what I'm saying to you, there's no one like God. He's the same today and forevermore. Hallelujah. He make a way out of no way. So God, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord. Because I'm going to get started on this word. I'm going to get this word complete. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. And I just, God, I just, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for this day, God. I thank you for ordering my steps. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. God, I thank you. God, I ask that you... You would speak through me today, Lord God, that I would be your mouthpiece, Lord God. Hallelujah, that I would be your mouthpiece. Hallelujah, that it would be less of Kiwana, God, it would be all of you, Lord God, that I would decrease, God, and that your will would be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, God, and that the word, <laughs> that the word would not fall on deaf ears in Jesus' name. 
God, the word that come forth, Lord God, that it would, Lord God, it would produce a great harvest in those who receive this word today in Jesus' name. Oh God, that Lord God, that fruit would be produced in their life, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that they would become and be everything that you called them to be in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, y'all. Uh, God been having me in the book of Mark lately, right? So. Uh, chapter four of Mark. We're, we're, I've been reading in the book of Mark. And we're going to go on down to the parable um, of the sower right i want to first read the parable of the sower i want to break down and talk about the parable of the sower explained okay and i'm gonna break those scriptures down and from there uh we're gonna go on to the next in in the book of mark and we're gonna read it go on down to verses 30 through uh 30 through 32 and that's about the um, parable of the mustard seed. Okay. So, chapter 4 of Mark, verse 13 reads, And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Verse 14 says, The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay? These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground. Stony ground. Who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. It goes on to say, afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Verse 18 says, now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. And that in the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things enter and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Okay. Then verse 20 says, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who what? Who hear the word, accept it and bear fruit. Some 30 fold, some 60 and some 100. So let's break that down, y'all. Let's break that down. God is talking about the word and how important it is that we need to receive the word, the word of God, that when it's when it when the word, when we're taught the word, when we read the word, what what, what are we doing with the word? Is is what what is your word um what is it sown on? Is it sown on what kind of ground? What kind of ground is your is your word sown on? The first one is sown on what? Okay. Let's go to it. Uh, thorns, right? It says these likewise are the ones on stony ground. No, not it wasn't thorns. Excuse me. Stony ground, right? And the stony ground is what? I'm going to go back. The stony ground is who, when they hear the word, immediately they receive it. So the stony ground, okay, they're capable of hearing it. And they do receive it for a point. But what happens? It says what? When they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. So they're excited about it. They got that word. They got that word. Okay? And they have new roots in themselves and endure only for a time. So there's, there's a group of people that you receive the word. You know, it's on that stony ground. So, you know, there's there's some plushness there, but some stoniness there. And you you receive the word, but the word don't last in you long. It's there for a season. And then all of a sudden, it ain't there. It ain't taking root no longer. You, you know, you're not applying it to your life any longer. It's on a stony ground. Those stones are in the way. 
Those stones are keeping you from truly receiving what? The word of God. Let's go on. It says, and they have no root in themselves and endure only for a time. Then it goes on to say afterward, when what? When when it don't last long, because when tribulation come, when trials come, when situations come, when you don't know which way to turn, you get you get frustrated and you give up. Why? Because it's on stony ground. It's on stony ground. No, 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 no. There's a certain type of soil that our Lord wants us, want the word of God to be deposited in us. You know, we want us to have, it want, It needs to be on a certain type of ground. So let's get to it. Let's get to figure out which, which type of ground we need to be planted on. Okay. Um, verse 18 says, now these are the ones sown among thorns. And what? They are the ones who wear, who hear the word. And what? And cares of, and the cares of this world. The deceitfulness. Y'all, I think I don't know. Um, no, no, no. Uh, I'm, okay. Yeah. And these are the ones sown among thorns. And they are the ones who hear the word. And the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things enter and choke the world, the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So let's talk about the, the thorny the thorny um the word y'all forgive me in my eye let's talk about thorns okay thorns are what when you think about a thorn what do you think about thorns are things that stick you okay you you ever you ever uh you have you ever went and picked off a, a rose off of a a, 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 a tr um what of a bush and all those thorns are in it well those are and and then there's uh, there's plenty of bushes and different type of plants that have uh thorns in them when when things happen in life what happened and we're talking about the word where I want to bring it back to the word so he was talking about thorns sticking, thorns what? Thorns choking, thorns choking the word out of you. See, thorns, when thorns stick to things in your life, thorns stick to, to the things you love, the riches, the, you know, thorns, you, 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 if you, you got a thorny life, you have a thorny life, it's because you love riches, you love the things of this world, you love the foods, you love this, you, you put anything and everything above God. And so what happens? It chokes out the life of Christ in you. And, and you have no fruit. Your life becomes unfruitful because the things in this world have choked the life out of you. Because you got caught up. You got stuck. Those thorns in you got stuck to, to can you imagine having thorns all poking, coming out your face all over your body? And 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 you you were consumed with the things of this world. So wherever you went, you know, uh, you, you, the money was stuck to you from the thorns. You, the 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 money was attracted to the thorns. So you know, uh, I, I I sound I might, I might, I might, uh, <laughs> woo, I might sound crazy, but what I'm trying to tell you is, thorns stick to anything, right? Are you a thorny person? Are you full of thorns? And then, and then what? Then we have the what? The good ground. Now, what kind of ground is this? This this ground is called the solid foundation. And this is this is a person that what? Hear and accept. They produce fruit in their life. Some produce thirty fold. Some produce sixty fold. Some produce a hundred fold. What are you producing in your life? What are you producing? in your life. I don't know. I I have the slightest clue what you're producing. But my prayer and my desire is that each and every one who watch this video or or who live on this earth period, whether you see this video or not, is that you would be placed on a solid rock foundation. 
I don't want you to be, to be like a thorn. And I don't want you to be like a stony ground. No, I want you to have a solid rock foundation. That's just it. God wants us to have a solid rock foundation. We need a solid rock foundation in order to make it in this earth, on this earth, in order to accomplish the task that we need to accomplish. We need a solid rock foundation. We need fresh soil to germinate so that beautiful flowers and, and beautiful things can grow so that we can produce what we need to produce and, it, and, it could, and so that we can attract others so that they can have the same, right? That's my prayer for us. Now let's go on over. We're talking, now we're gonna talk about the parable of the mustard seed. Verse 30 says, then he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or what? Or with what parable shall we picture it? Is it like a mustard seed? Which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greater than all, all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that a mustard seed is the smallest seed, is the smallest seed in the plant kingdom? Did you know that, right? Did y'all know that a mustard seeds are the, they are small and round seeds, right? There, um, there's different various kinds of mustard plants. Okay, and it says these seeds are usually about what? One to two millimeters. I don't even have an example to show you um, a picture of one, but they are really tiny. I was having a conversation with someone and they said to me that they, that they, they have about, a, about the size of a mustard seed faith. And so this message is for you. Okay. Good God Almighty. And it says the millimeter in diameter and may be colored from a yellowish to a white or to a black color. Okay. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger, listen, than all the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and make nest in its branches. That's how powerful a mustard seed is. So, so to the one who, who I was talking to and they were saying that they only had mustard seed faith. Look, that's all you need. That is all you need with God. Because God can allow that. God is saying that little ounce, that little one to two millimeter of faith, mustard seed faith you got. My sister, my brother, when it grows, when it truly develops and become exactly what God has created it to be, actually, look, you, you'll be able to allow birds and people to be able to nest up in your branches because of the faith, the faith you had. That little bit of faith will take you to, 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 to great places. So don't be moved by the size of faith you have. Just a little bit of faith will do. I'm going to say it again. Just a little bit of faith will do. I think about someone else who had faith. Let's go to her. Let's go, let's go check her out. Matthew chapter 15. Verse um, 25. This is a woman that had faith. Okay. Well, actually, I'm going to start at verse 21. It says, Then Jesus went out from the went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre. Um, 
Tyree or Tyre, Tyree or Ty, whatever, and Sidian. And behold, a woman of Canaan, Can um, Canaan or Canaan, came from the region and cried out, cried out to him, saying, "Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon possessed." But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and urged him saying, send her away for she cries out after us. She was being worse. And the disciples was fed up with her. But listen, what goes, what, listen, listen to the story. But he answered Jesus and he said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 25 says, then she came and worshiped him saying, Lord, 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 help me. Verse 26, but he answered and said, is it not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs? Verse 27 says, and she said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Verse 28 says, Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. He said to her, Is it, is it what? Is it not good to take the children's bread and throw it at the little dogs. And she went on and she said, look, 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 Jesus. Look. Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs. Which fall from the master's table. She said, Lord, look, if you just give me a little crumb. That's enough for me. Because I got faith that you're going to heal my daughter. All I need is your crumb. Come on now, a piece of a crumb. Look, you, you see this little teeny, you see this little teeny seed, not a seed, this is a, it's a little, little something that came off my pillow, you know, they be popping off. That's all she said. She said, all I need is that much, Lord. All I need is the crumbs. She said, yes, the crumbs, even the dogs. The dogs take the crumbs off the master's table. Lord, I, I, hey, call me a dog. Call me what you want. And he wasn't even saying that in that context to, to belittle her, you know. But she didn't care because she was desperate, y'all. She was desperate. Her faith was high in the Lord and she believed. Look, if you only just give me a crumb off the master's table, that's enough to heal my daughter. That's enough. To, to raise her up out of this situation. So I'm saying to you, look, look, if you only had a crumb, is that enough for you? Is that enough for you? If you only had a little seed, is that enough for you? Because actually that seed turns into what? A mustard seed is what? It's actually enormous when it grows and it develops. Hallelujah. And then I think about another story. David. David, who grew up to be a king. But you know what? He had brothers. And, 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 and you know, when the prophet came, the prophet was looking. He was looking and he was looking. And he was looking. You know? And the daddy presented all the brothers to the prophet. But the daddy didn't present. The daddy didn't present David. Vision. I'm, the daddy didn't present David. He didn't present him. Why? Because he was like, oh, he he ain't developed yet. He ain't ready. He ain't ready. You know, the my sons, they they've been they've been in war. They they they've been prepared. They're ready for this to 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 face this giant Goliath. You know? So he never presented. Actually, I think his dad the dad's name was Jesse. Jesse never presented David to the prophet. Why? Who knows why? Excuse me, y'all. Because he thought he wasn't ready. But we get caught up 
in, in statue. We get stature. We get caught up in size. We get caught up in Ooh, we get caught up in things. We get caught up in how things look. We get caught up and we don't realize that God can use anything and everything for his glory. And he used that little boy, David. That little boy, David, became the King David. And he wasn't perfect. But guess what? He had what? He had a lot of faith. Yes, David was a young boy, but he had a lot of faith. Hallelujah. And he conquered who? Who did he conquer? Who did he conquer? His brothers and them was in war and they was, they was already out there in the war. And who, who came out there? Who came out to the field to come bring the food? Y'all should read the story. Who came out in the field to, 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 to give the food to the brothers? And he had what? He had a sling and he had some stones. And he did what? He defeated Goliath. He defeated Goliath. He knocked him out. Come on now. This little boy. Shorty. Short not. He completed the task. Look. God want to use you. God want to use me. God want to use us. We just got to have what? Faith. Faith of a mustard seed. Faith like David had. Faith like this woman in Matthew chapter 15, whose daughter was demon possessed. She said, even, even the, even the what? The dogs eats the crumbs from the master's tables. She said, look, look, daddy, all I need is your crumbs. Because I know in those crumbs is enough healing. For my daughter, God have a crumb available for you today. God has that same crumb for me today. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that song. I'm hearing that song again, y'all. And I'm hearing her singing. I'm hearing her singing. I'm hearing the singing. She said, great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Faithful through the ages. Look, y'all enjoy the song. Subscribe to this channel. Share this video. Like it. And I'll see y'all again. I love you. Go check it out. Check it out for yourself. Maverick City Music. Promises. I love y'all. God bless you.